This is my IBM Model M keyboard, and for the first time in a long time, it's no longer sitting at my desktop PC as my primary keyboard. Well, as of late, it's become increasingly unreliable, and unfortunately it seems like there's a couple of different things that it could be. The most likely culprit being broken plastic rivets that hold the sandwich of layers that make up a Model M, followed by a faulty or failing membrane or a PCB controller board. And I've been trying to make do with getting this thing to cooperate. Usually if you kind of get a bit rambunctious with the keys, I've noticed if you try to depress one, two, three, and four, the, the problem keys all at once, then it starts to work for a little bit. But if you step away from the computer for an extended length of time, it goes back to failing to register key presses properly or double tapping them, acting as though you double, double tap the key as is becoming an unfortunate reality with these Model M's. Time is beginning to get even with these. This particular example of a Model M was manufactured July 7th of 92. Now there seems to be two unanimously agreed upon solutions to failing plastic rivets. That's by doing what's called a bolt mod using very small bolts, nuts, and washers to take the place of the failed rivets. Or the lazy man's approach that pretty much does the same thing is a screw mod where instead of using bolts and nuts you're using just very small screws uh, both in terms of diameter and length to pretty much do the same thing minus of course the extra work that comes with doing the bolt mod of course the most important aspect of uh, effectuating this repair is being able to get into the keyboard and that's where the 730 seconds thin wall socket comes into play so this one is one of apparently few sockets that people find that uh, will work with this keyboard this one just happened to be lying around and works perfectly and there we have it the guts of a circa 1992 model ibm model m and now begins the delicate ballet of uh, lifting up and removing this thing and you can actually see my futile efforts to uh, remedy those issues brought about by broken rivets uh, hereafter referred to as the paper mod folding up pieces of paper stacking it up under the, uh, the entire mechanism in an effort to close up this gap that begins to grow increasingly large as those rivets begin to fail causing intermittent and erratic operation. I don't know if this is good news, bad news, or somewhere in between, but there's a surprising lack of broken rivets in here. That may or may not be good news because the rivets might not be causing the erratic and unreliable operation of this keyboard, and instead it could be the PCB controller board, or what I'm really hoping isn't the case, but knowing my luck probably is, the membrane is failing. Well, here we go. No turning back now. Fortunately, this Model M does not have a uh, very prominent birth certificate sticker like the older ones did, where it was a large rectangle, a rectangular sticker that ended up covering up by at least one, maybe two rivets that uh, you kind of have to massacre to, to complete this repair. This one just has this little sticker down here with uh, that's concealing one single rivet. So I could just cut around that and remove that without uh, too much of a fuss. And uh, this is not that difficult if not tedious yep try as i might i'm scratching up the back plate but nobody's going to see that once this thing's put back together well did you notice a critical mistake that i made i forgot to remove the keycaps before proceeding with uh de-riveting this keyboard for the sake of brevity i'll save everybody in the viewing audience the uh, trial and tribulation i went to removing all of the keycaps using my bare fingers i don't have one of those fancy keycap pullers and now my keycaps are taking a nice warm bubble bath consisting of uh, warm water and palm olive to uh, soak and uh, clean out their pores. And just like that, thanks to some movie magic, all the rivets have been removed. Looks like there are some signs of corrosion on the uh, back plate here. I will admit that's rather satisfying to do. And there we have it. Well, aside from the back plate having some very visible signs of water intrusion and corrosion, the membrane also has quite a number of questionable areas, not the least of which being here. Here. Oh yeah, and especially here. I know at this point just about everybody would probably suggest just to get a new membrane, but I want to try my luck at restoring the uh, current one from this keyboard. 
I'm just using the 70% isopropyl alcohol and this uh, microfiber which is becoming increasingly dirty the more times I use it to clean this and it does seem to be looking quite a bit better than that which we started with alright with the keycaps thoroughly cleaned and drying along with the membranes I went ahead and snipped off all the remnants of the rivet just as best as I possibly could on the barrel plate and I know there's probably going to be people in the comments right about now just waiting to uh, lambaste me for um, butchering this keyboard but remember there's a first time for everything and uh, yeah this is the best that I can manage in fact what I'm probably going to end up doing at this point is filing down what little is left of those rivets that the nail nippers ended up missing. I also take the opportunity to clean this thing down with some soapy water because it's uh, well, rather grimy. And now time for the real fun to begin. Drilling out the holes with a 1 16th inch drill bit very carefully without breaking either the barrel plate or the bit. Now well, it's the next day now and uh, before heading off to bed last night decided to see this through almost to completion and with quite a bit of uh, careful precision <laughs> precision drilling I ended up drilling each of the 50 holes where the rivets formerly were and actually 51 because there's a spot right where the number pad would be actually right over here that uh, from the factory did not come with a rivet but if you look in the back of the slip mat as well as the membranes there is a little hole that was cut out for a rivet so it's curious why they didn't uh, decide to put a rivet there but nonetheless I have went ahead and drilled that one out as well and then fed in the screws I'm using McMaster car part number 92005A029 which are M2 by 0.4 millimeter thread 8 millimeter long steel panhead Phillips screws then I'm using some steel hex nuts, part number 9059-2A004. And then I'm using these absolutely minuscule washers to correspond with the bolts. McMaster car part number 93475-A196. I can't take credit for discovering the part numbers. It was done, uh, discovered actually after doing a bit of sleuthing and reading a number of bolt mod tutorials online. Somebody had uh, done the legwork for me. Unfortunately, I did discover that a crack was forming on the left side of the barrel plate right in the middle. And what I ended up doing is filling that up with some epoxy adhesive. Only time will tell if that will actually hold up and actually be able to withstand the flex that's going to be put on this thing once it's installed and uh, sandwiched together with all the other components because this does curve quite a bit after installation. And I'll be the first one to admit that this was a less than professional job. In fact, this was a rather amateur effort at bolt mounting a Model M. And this is not something that I would recommend doing. If you have one that's priceless and you want to be 100% perfectly modded, for example, there's a spot here, spot there, spot there, among a few others that needed some coaxing so that way the screws are threaded in correctly and in the correct spots to line up with the back plate, the slip mat, and the membrane. Don't worry, this uh, white residue, that's just like off-gassing from the glue. It wipes off with your hand. It's now time to begin replacing all of the springs, the flippers, in their respective holes. And doing that is really as tedious as it sounds. Well, certainly no worse than uh, drilling out the holes and threading in the screws. You just place them in, and that's it. Honestly, this feels more like a game of operation than anything else, getting these in just right. We're approaching completion rather quickly at this point. Although, leading up to this point wasn't exactly what you would consider quick. Very, very tedious. And we're just going to pretend that uh, these two, three, four, five screws were lined up perfectly. We just don't see them. They're invisible. Is this the right way to do things? Certainly not. Voila. Well, we have signs of life after connecting it back up to my main PC. I would be lying if I didn't mention the number of hiccups that I encountered after first uh, power-up of this Model M after bolt mounting. 
the caps lock and majority of the keys were not registering. In fact, the numlock LED was stuck on after boot up and pressing scroll lock, caps lock, nothing changed. What I ended up doing to uh, remedy that is disassembling this keyboard once again. And by disassemble, I mean take everything apart, nuts, bolts, membranes, flipper, pivot, plate, key switch things, this buckling spring mechanism, and then pretty much start from the top all over again, reassembling this thing. And now it works. You can just barely see the screw heads if you look just right in certain positions. There's another one hiding behind the minus key on the number pad. But unless you're looking extremely close at this keyboard and trying to find them, the bolts or the screw heads are almost totally invisible leading to an almost 100% factory fit and finish with the exception of some shiny slivers of silver hiding behind some select keycaps and switches. As for the typing feel, things have changed but for the better. For example, my spacebar is less bouncy and rattly. The keyboard feels much crisper and more solid overall. Almost like everything has been brought back to have a much tighter tolerance. I uh, probably should turn off the window sounds before doing that. Hopefully that'll be the last time for a long time that I'll have to have this thing as disassembled as it was. And now all I need to seal the deal and put this thing back to 100% is an escape key. And just like that, $10 and a week later, I have a brand new recreation of a factory IBM Model M escape key. My keyboard is finally complete.